welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. If you are feeling like you want some positivity in your day today, you should exit out because today we are going over one, two, three, four, five, six, eight different fails that I tested in the last month. Like, I don't know what happened this past month, but I tried some stuff and a lot of this stuff I tried on camera with y'all and what's going on? A lot of drugstore stuff, unfortunately, one high-end product and one, I believe this is a Korean makeup brand product that was absolutely insane and a body care product. So we've got a couple things across the board and I was actually gonna make a favorites and fails video today and I realized that I had so many fails, the video would be just way too long if I also put my favorites in there. So we're just doing flops. We're just doing flops. If you are new here, I typically do favorites and flops every single month. So I can link the ones that I've done from previous months. But again, you know, this is saving you money in a different way saving you from spending coin on something that is not going to work for you. So if you're new here, like I said, my name is Rudy. I would love for you to subscribe. We talk about skincare, makeup, hair care. We do favorites and flops. We do old school YouTube videos. We do chit chats, get ready with me's. We kind of do it all. And I would love to have you subscribe. First of all, I just have to say this complexion, it's unreal. It's so good. It's the exact same base that I used in my last video, which was a video talking about like what's been going on in the industry and um, the Lashgate drama and all of that. And the base is the Say Glowy Super Gel and the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Foundation, which neither of those are very inexpensive. They're both quite expensive, but I have never had a base look like thinner, but more skin-like in my life. Like I am addicted to the Durer. The Durer. So let's get into it. Okay, so one thing, the first thing that is a fail is something I had on in a video where I was testing a bunch of new drugstore stuff. Some stuff that I absolutely loved and now a couple things that are just absolute fails for me. Three things that ended up being a fail out of, four things ended up being a fail out of that haul. And then I'm looking in my bag of goods and we have more goods than bads from that haul, but let's just get started. First fail is the Undone Beauty Serum Tint, the Sheer Radiance Serum Tint. This is an enhancing wand for lit from within glow. Okay, so if you saw me try that on in that video, uh, which we can put a clip in of me putting that on, this did literally nothing literally nothing. It literally looks like water on your face and it doesn't even hydrate that well on the face. Let me just read you the back of this to listen to how ridiculous this is. Why do we need a fistful of primer, concealer, highlighter, and cream shadow to get that glow? We undid that with this unique dab on brightening serum with light enhancing micro pigments that magically conceals, highlights, and contours. Baby, are you crazy? First of all, no product can do that literally not a singular one, but especially not this one. So it comes in this like dabbing style form, which I already don't love because that's gonna be a little bit bacteria vibes, but this is what it looks like on the skin, you guys. You're gonna tell me that this, this is going to highlight, contour, and conceal. You're out of your mind. Undone Beauty, you've gone a step too far. This does literally nothing. And it looks like semi-glowy when you really, really squeeze it out. But then when you blend it in, it's water. It's water. And it also comes in multiple shades. I don't think the shades are doing anything for you, sweetie PD. I don't think they're doing a damn thing. I don't even know what shade this is in. So all that to say, don't waste your money on this. If you need a good primer that's gonna be glowy on the skin, I highly recommend the e.l.f. filter, Hollywood Flawless Filter dupe. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's $14. It is going to give you that glow for real and hydrate the skin without leaving just water. So it's a fail. It's a no for me, dog. All right, let's talk about two skincare products from the same line that were a fail for me. In fact, this is the third thing in this line that has been a fail for me. And that is from Pacifica and it is their, their kind line their kind line. So I mentioned um, their under eye brightener from this line as a fail a couple months ago that was supposed to brighten the under eyes immediately and really didn't enjoy that. Now we're adding the kind glaze and the kind tint SPF to that list. I will say I am testing out the kind, <laughs> kindy, kind, kind, the Dream Lit Glow Concealer from this line from Pacifica and it's it's okay. I don't dislike it a ton. Um, 
I will say the shade range is to be lacking, to be desired. There is literally none. But the actual product itself is pretty nice. It's got a good coverage to it. It's pretty glowy. And um, this shade works for me, and this is in shade 9. So I'm still testing that right now, so I can't give you an exact thought on it, and I'll get back to you soon on that. But everything else from this line has been Dudu Kaka. Titi Tutu. So let's break these down. This is the kind glaze and it's considered a dewy glow layer. When I saw that, I was like, hell yeah. In the back it says moisturize and glaze. Ingredients we love, ceramide, vegan collagen, and vegan squalene. I love all of that. Those are all products that work very well on my skin. Really enjoy them. I mentioned in my last video as well that I have not even been able to really fully test this because the smell the smell of it all. There's two reasons why I don't like this product. One is the smell, which like, you know, maybe you can get over the smell. I can't because it smells like um, old oatmeal. Old oatmeal. Something about it is just off. Ugh, I don't like it. And then secondarily, I do think there is perfume in this product as well. Secondarily, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that might look like the glowy super gel from Say. Like it has that look to it. But then when you really blend it into the skin, it's just like a lotion. Like, there's no real glow to it. I mean, I thought that was so odd. So here I am rubbing it in, in real time, and that glow is completely gone. It's completely gone. It was almost like a lotion that was tinted with, like, a little bit of yellow or something. But, like, once again, these, these drugstore, like, base layers to add glow to your skin, there's no glow. There's nothing. So I would, again, much rather use the e.l.f. or use a regular moisturizer. If I'm going to go ahead and do the damn thing, you might as well just use the moisturizer you use in the morning than spend money on something that's supposed to give you extra glow that does absolutely nothing for the skin. So I thought that was really strange. I also don't like the packaging. Just um, It's not for me. And then I thought, okay, this sounds amazing. This is their SPF from this line. It is a mineral SPF. It's tinted and it's an SPF 30, all things that to Typically I would go for 20% um, zinc oxide and it is fragrance free. So I was like, great, this sounds perfect. I didn't like this at all. I found that it dried out my skin. The tint is not a tint. Like whenever people say that they have a tinted mineral sunscreen and this is the color that comes out, that ain't a tint, baby. That's just a sunscreen. Like that is not a tint. For who? Casper? Like. I get it because mineral sunscreens are typically white, but that's what this is going to turn into when you rub it in. There's nothing about this that's going to tint your skin, unlike a, a true tinted sunscreen like the Tower 28 or the Say or even the Color Science. Like this is not tinted. This is white. And same goes with my favorite SPF, by the way, the Coats tinted sunscreen, it's not tinted. It's basically just like this. This dried my skin out. It gives you literally no glow. And on top of that, it has a funky smell. What is this old ass oatmeal smell that Pacifica is putting in their products? Like, I don't know. But it smells stink, it smells rank, even though there's no perfume or, or fragrance in it. It dried out my skin, it took a long time to blend in. It's just, I know that it's hard to formulate a good sunscreen at a low price, but I'm telling you there are some out there and that ain't one of them. So I'm, I'm disappointed in this. I'll definitely go through it and use it on my body or th something like that just to not waste it. But there are others out there. I have a whole list of my favorite SPFs in my shop. My, if you ever want to know like what I'm using, it's always linked in the description, just like my general everyday uh, makeup routine and skincare routines in there. Mm. I don't think I'm gonna be buying from the kind line anymore. Honestly too, I haven't tried something from Pacifica that was like good since, I don't know, ever? Have I ever? All right, so next up is a high dollar skincare item. And I wanna tell you the backstory about this because this was sent to me and it was actually going to be for a partnership that I was gonna do with this brand. Um, and that is the brand Sunday Riley and the product is the Be Nice 10% Niacinamide Serum. Um, I'm not gonna go into it too far because I obviously don't wanna bash a brand or a product that was interested in working with me. Like, I think that is so flattering and I love that. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you what didn't work for me and this did not work for me for multiple reasons so I had been testing this over two weeks time before deciding if I wanted to be um, in that campaign with them or not and I decided against it and 
I'll tell you why. Okay, first of all, this is a really pricey niacinamide serum. This product is $65 for niacinamide. Granted, there are a lot of other cool ingredients in this product, but I really think that there are other brands doing niacinamide just as well. Um, we've got um, Naturium, The Ordinary. Pretty much you can get a niacinamide serum literally anywhere because it is the ingredient of the moment. So that was something that I was keeping in my mind where I was like, this is a really pricey serum, what is gonna set it apart? Um, so that was already something that I was being really cognizant of. But then when you actually go to open the, the packaging, the hole itself is humongous. The actual hole for the, see me, see me spilling it, is huge. And this is the consistency of the product. I'm not even squeezing on the top. So you see how thin and watery it is? The hole and the packaging itself gets so so messy because there's not anything like helping to keep it in the dropper bottle and this giant ass hole is just like it's just gaping and dropping everywhere so automatically i was like 65 dollars and i'm making a huge mess on my vanity and a mess of the product i just didn't like that at all i like a product where when you pull out the little needle it, it kind of like sucks it dry so that you can get exactly what you want without mess. So that already was like, ooh, didn't like that. Then, although this is fragrance free, there is some funky scent to this. I think there is like lemon peel oil in this. There are some citrus peel oils in it, which was kind of like my second strike. My skin does not like citrus oil at all. It's got a scent almost like Lysol. I don't know if y'all have tried that and smelled it, but let me know if you have. It very much bothered me. And then thirdly, uh, the moment that I put this on my skin, I got an immediate like, stinging sensation and then it went away so it's not like it was stinging the whole time i was wearing it and i wore this multiple nights again tested it for a couple weeks um and i didn't notice anything on my face looking irritated like i didn't have any breakouts or redness or anything like that so the serum itself may be good but the entire experience of using this product um was just negative i didn't like it i didn't like the way it made my face feel i didn't like using it i didn't like opening the product and using it. I just didn't feel like I wanted to use it. So obviously I didn't accept the partnership, but I wanted to tell you about that because if you were eyeing this and you have similar skin to me or you expect a lot out of your products, especially if you're spending $65, that is my thought on that one. All right, let's talk about a few makeup products. Um, I was really sad about this one because one of my best friends loves this product and I love her to death. And that is Kelly Gooch. Kelly Gooch is my soul sister. I love her. She is like, I just love her so much. It's hard to explain our relationship because we really are like sister twins, but also we make fun of each other and laugh at each other and poke fun at each other, which is really awesome in meeting someone new. Like I met her this year and I feel like we're just like this. So anyways, she loves this product, which is why I bought it. And um, the reason I don't like it is the uh, the texture and the feel. So this is the Flower Beauty Color Shift Lip Smoothie. And she um, brought this up as a recommendation for a color changing product from the drugstore because it feels like everything right now that's color changing is really expensive. So I'll put this on for you so you can see the color, but it's gonna be this color. You know, I've talked about this before that every single color changing product has that same color to it, um, which is this fuchsia pink color. Um, so I appreciate that this is already stained to that color because you know exactly what you're getting. But I personally don't like the consistency of this product because it is way, way too thin. So you can see it coming up here and see how drippy it is. See that? Um, I prefer a lip product that has a little bit more of like oomph to it, a little bit more like thickness. So I'm just gonna... Ha, 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 ha. It just feels like a, it feels like a cheap lip oil. You know what I'm talking about? Like one of those, one of those lip oils that's like watery and it just like slides all around your mouth. That's what this feels like. And I just, <laughs> I just prefer something thicker. I will say, I think the packaging is really cute. I have enjoyed a lot of things from Flower Beauty. In fact, uh, what I was wearing before this was from Flower Beauty. It's one of their new click up pens that I feel is a dupe for um, high end clickers like this. <laughs> but this, I just, I'm not even enjoying wearing it. Like I wanna take it off because it just feels so like yuck. It, it just feels way too oily for me. And I don't feel like it's doing anything for 
my actual lips. So what I would recommend in its place, um, and it's something that I talk about all the time, is the Essence Cranberry Lip Oil. This is a thicker lip oil. It kind of reminds me of like the Dior lip oils. And it gives that same effect, that like hot pink color, as you can see. But it sticks to the lips a little bit more and it's not so runny. And it's probably cheaper. Mm. So if you were looking for that like hot pink, I even think the color is more vibrant with this one, um, then that's what I would go for. And I would even go for that over some of the high-end ones. So unfortunately this was not working for me, but if you do like a really lightweight oil, you might like that. I did not though. Speaking of lips, I got this in PR from um, a brand that sends Korean products, which I love. I think that's amazing and I like trying Korean skincare and makeup. Like I really, really like it. And they sent me a couple of these and this is from the brand Kibo, K-E-Y-B-O. I had never heard of this brand, um, but this is their lip plumper and this is the Dotum Lip Plus and this one is in the shade Grand Master. I don't know about that, but let me tell you something. I tried this on before I got in the shower because I was like, I was like, let me just put this on before I get in the shower so if it's bad, I can just wipe it off. This is the most painful lip plumper I have ever tried. Like ever tried. It felt like straight pain to my lips. Like I think I'm kind of done with that. I think I'm kind of done with that. I feel too old to be messing around with this kind of makeup anymore. I just, I think that this fail is, is kind of all lip oils in one or all lip plumpers in one because I think I'm done. I know I'm probably gonna like end up reviewing a lip plumper in the next week or something like this, but this fucking hurt. And like when you wipe it off, if you get it on your fingers and then you get it somewhere else, you're gonna make your skin red and mad and I feel like I couldn't get it off and I couldn't get the pain feeling to go away. So if you ever see this brand, stay away. If you ever see it on like yes style or something like that uh-uh at least this this is painful horrible horrible we're wrapping up here i have two more things and the next is also a drugstore fail which i was sad about um this is new from milani this is the stay put liquid brow wax and i was really excited about this because i don't have the best luck with brow waxes like this, um, you know, the one's from Anastasia, this one's from e.l.f. This is the one that I have had the best luck with, um, is the e.l.f. one, and it's the only one that kind of like hasn't gone bad in the actual packaging, but I just generally like don't love a wax. When I got this, I was like, oh, this could be a good um, like in between because it's a wax, but it's on a spoolie. Well, this wax is white, you guys. It's straight up white, look at that. Um, hello, it's white. And when you wear it on your eyebrows, it stays white. It doesn't like dry down to a clear. And um, this is supposed to be a long wear brow lock. And I don't know if this comes in multiple shades, but it felt super sticky. It wasn't like drying down, which is what I don't like about waxes, like products like this one. I also have one from the Sephora brand that I don't like, which is also, it's in a pencil form. This one is the Sephora Instant Brow Waxy Brow Pencil. So the actual pencil itself is really waxy and that is what's supposed to like keep them in place. Don't like that either. I just don't think I'm meant to be a brow wax girl. I think I'm more of a gel or a serum type girl because this ain't it. I like to be able to have my brows down and honestly crispy. We've talked about this. I'm a crispy girl. These, these suckers ain't going anywhere crisp out. Okay, my next fail is from the brand, this is my last fail for the video, so don't worry, we're wrapping up. It's from the brand Alley Oop. And I've had a lot of people ask me to review Alley Oop and I don't know that I'm going to because I don't have a ton of interest in a lot of their stuff. They have sent me some PR, which by the way, I'm not even sure how they got my address, so that's fun. But uh, I, I haven't had the best luck with a lot of their products and this one, fucking sucked, okay? By the way, Alley Oop makes super cheap, inexpensive products um, for skincare, makeup, body care, like, and just random stuff, like a bunch of random stuff. And this is what they made uh, that I was testing out while I was home in Indiana. This is a like to-go sort of razor that has two razors, a lotion bar, and I think this is like an aftershave sort of spray. And then again, like two full razors. So I brought this with me to India and I was like, this is such a good idea. I took a bath and used this, which is like your skin is its most plump when you're like sitting in a bath. 
and I got so many cuts from this. Like, first of all, the razor itself, it's a three blade. It is a three blade, okay? We need a minimum of five girls and boys. Probably boys need even more. This did nothing. This lotion stick did absolutely nothing. It just washed right off my skin and I don't even know about this spray. I'm not really even sure what it is. I mean, I'm spraying it and nothing's coming out. So this is absolute garbaggio. And I was really looking forward to using this because I was like, oh, this is such a good way to travel. But honestly, I'm just gonna put my Billy razor in my bag and call it a day. I'm sorry, that was a lot. I know some of you don't like the fails videos, but that's just what it is. Had to give you the tea. Um, I'm really excited about a few videos coming up because I wanna do like sort of a Valentine's Day, like what you should, like gift guide for Valentine's Day kind of. I'm still deciding exactly how I wanna do it, but I wanna talk about like what I'm doing to get ready and what I would recommend like you wear and do on Valentine's Day. So I'm excited about that. Um, we're going to talk about 2023 trends and what Vogue has predicted for 2023 because there's a lot to discuss. Um, and let me know down below what else you want to see from me in the upcoming month of February. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video really soon. Bye! <laughs>